What's cracking everyone? My name is Ryan and today I want to talk to you guys about the newly released Kyan RU7. Now this is a portable DAC amp solution from Kyan Audio. It's kind of a follow-up to the RU6. It retails in at $289.99 and I bought this myself on kind of a blind buy based simply off just the, the technical specifications and the different options and features it has on it. And I thought this would be something great that I could compare to my IFI Go Bar that I love so much. So yeah, I just bought it. Now to tell you what uh, comes inside the box really quick, you of course are gonna get the dongle DAC inside the box. You're going to get a nice USB-C to USB-C, you know, little short four inch cable here. You get a USB-C to USB-A adapter. So plug this into like a laptop, your computer, anything like that. You're gonna get also a nice leather case, which it's kind of hard to take out once you put it in, which is good actually, I guess, if you think of it that way, it's green. Like I said, it's leather and it is really snug and you get the volume buttons on the case itself. So think of like a phone case, it functions really well. And then also, brilliantly i thought they included these little hockey pucks these are magnetized like just little hockey pucks is what i call them they actually will stick right to the DAC amp and the other side you can stick to you know whether it is your phone case you know your laptop case or whatever and you get two of these so that you know on the go you're not having to hold your DAC the entire time you're just set and you go and yeah i just thought that was you know nice little touch that they added inside the box and then of course, also you're gonna get the manual inside the box uh, that talks about the different features of the device, which by the way, let's go ahead and talk about that next. So technical spec wise, this is a one bit discrete DAC. And I wanna speak about that a second because I have seen online on some sites that are selling this and things, they're calling this a ladder DAC, or excuse me, an R2R DAC. This is not an R2R DAC. And Kyan actually explains this on HeadFi in the forums. I'm actually gonna link the article you know, down below in the description, but the difference between this and like the RU6, which was an R2R DAC, the RU6 was a two channel DAC. This is a four channel fully balanced DAC. So there is some technical advancements that they made with this device. Uh, it's their own technology that they put in that made this a discrete DAC. And what's really unique about this one is this can be used as a single DAC to go ahead and output to a speaker amplifier, you know, whether it's, you know, for headphones or whatever, and that's very unique. So the other things technical wise, this is an all DSD 256, which you can actually switch between three different modes. It's PCM 44 all the way up to 384 kilohertz. It does have a three and a half out and a 4.4 out on here. So the three and a half out is going to output 160 milliwatts per 32 ohms and a half ohm impedance. The 4.4 is gonna be 400 milliwatts per 32 ohms and a full ohm of impedance out. The volume, now make sure I say this right, is a 100 steps high precision resistor array volume control. What that basically means is there are three segments that will kick in on their volume control here. One to 49 is gonna be segment one, 50 to 79 is segment two, and then, 80 to 100 is gonna be segment three of that relay system. Very interesting technology on that. There is also low gain and high gain mode on this. And then as I said, this is a shared line out. So basically what that means is you can go line out from either of these ports directly to an amp or something of your choice. Now, depending on where you go, if you use the 3.5, you're gonna actually get 1.2 volts out. And if you go the 4.4, you're gonna get 2.4 volts out, which is obviously gonna double the power of that. Kyan was very clear also to say, this does not replace a true desktop DAC and that it's still not gonna provide as much power to an external amp as a true DAC will, but this does, does give you a nice portable solution on the go, which is something I was really curious to try out. And actually, I will show you guys here, I purchased this right after I got the RU7. This is a 4.4 to dual RCA adapter so that I was able to get the most volts out of this and plug this into my different amps. And I will talk about that in the sound section here because I plug this into my bottlehead crack because why not? All right, so let's go ahead and run through next. You know, when you hook this up to your phone or 
whatever, uh, what the different features are going to be. By the way, this is a mini LSD screen on here. And the LSD screen is black and white. You know, it's very simple, but I do like the fact that there's a screen so I can clearly see what volume I'm on, what, uh, you know, bit rates coming out of it at the time. If you hold down the power, which is the mode button on here, you'll get into the settings. And there's some very simple settings here. You're going to go either low gain or high gain, which I believe high gain adds six decibels, but please don't quote me on that because I thought I read that somewhere and then I tried to find it again and I could not. But yeah, I believe that's what the high gain does uh, as far as the boost goes. And then you're going to get the option to choose the DSP modes. So you can go all to 64, all to 128, or all to 256. Basically what that means, it's going to upsample all of your audio being mixed out through 264, 128, or 256. I definitely recommend you play around with that when you're listening to your music to see which one you might prefer. And it could be track-based, which again, I'll talk about in the sound. And then you're also going to get the option to set this to P out, which is obviously headphones out, or L out, which is the line out. And then there is also a timeout display so that you can set this, you know, however long you want this to stay on before it times out on its own, uh, depending on what you want to choose there. All right, and lastly, before I get into sound, I do want to talk about the build quality here because I do think Cayenne does a nice job of building their devices. This is no different. This is uh, pretty similar to the size of the GoBar. And, you know, it's not anything too hefty, but it's got a decent amount of weight at least to it. It's solid plastic around, you know, nice tactile buttons on here when you don't have the case on. Everything's gold plated from the USB C to the, uh, you know, the outs for your headphones. And yeah, it's just a nicely solid built device. And I really like the inclusion of the leather case. I'm not sure, but you know, maybe they'll do some different colors of the cases. If you're not a fan of the green, personally, I love the green. So I was excited to have something in that color way. And even the leather case is built very nice. Stitching's fantastic around this. I don't feel like this is anything that's gonna fall apart over time. And yeah, I mean, they put a lot of thought into the build and I appreciate that. All right, so let's go to sound impressions. And really what I wanna do here is I wanna to talk to you about the different headphones that I used through this and kind of talk to you about what I felt sound wise, you know, what that did to those headphones, if anything. And the first one I wanna start with is an easier to drive headphone and that is my Meze 109 Pro. So the Meze 109 Pro is my favorite sub 1000 headphone that I own and I felt like what this DAC amp does tightens up your music and tightens up the sound. And that was kind of, you know, something I wrote multiple times down as I was listening to different things and that I just felt like, you know, bass, mid-range, even treble, everything was just a little bit tighter and punchier. You know, I didn't feel like it was anything that was overly warm. Yeah, I would say like even the top end, you know, treble was a little bit snappier. And more so, I would say, with the 4.4 than even the 3.5, which doesn't really surprise me since it outputs, obviously, more power. So it definitely just gave my music, again, just some snappiness and just some very preciseness to the sound. And I think that also added to details and that it made some things sound a little bit more detailed than what, you know, definitely what you know, just a straight dongle is going to sound out of your phone, but just in general gave more details. And I think one track that I want to mention with the 109 Pro to give you some idea here is the sound, the uh, track On My Level by Wiz Khalifa that's got some very just like low end bass going through there and just, you know, on this particular dongle DAC, it was just a little more broad and a little more tighter on that low end bass line that's just constant through that track and wasn't like big and just kind of out of control bloated or boomy that it can be depending on the different, you know, device you have it on. And, you know, if this was something that was a little warmer tuned in the bass and gave you a little bit more bass that could sound a little more out of control. And I didn't feel that I felt, felt like it was brought in really nice with the bass. And that's kind of an example I can give at least on that track. And then I also listened to my Focal Radiance. Now my Focal Radiance, I remember, I think I was listening to uh, Billie Eilish and the Radiance is already a very bassy headphone, a very intimate headphone. And, you know, if you have if you have a device that you hook up to it, like, say, the IFI Go Bar that I feel like has a little bit more bass presence, 
it can be a little bit much sometime on the radiance. Again, this was just very tight and brought in and punchy. I mean, you want to talk, the radiance is already punchy and this just gave it a little bit more to that and also just lend to the details a little bit as well so that I didn't feel like I was getting drowned out by the low end and was just a nice detailed listen through the Focal Radiance. And again, using three and a half and 4.4, 4.4, I preferred you know a little bit better on that headphone. So then we're gonna go ahead and jump in and talk about IEMs really quick here because unfortunately guys, I don't have any ultra sensitive IEMs yet. You know, I'm hoping to get some here in the future, especially after listening to some at CanJam. But, you know, looking through my collection that I have, the Simgot EA500 is actually somewhat sensitive. So I did listen to that one uh, pretty extensively on the RU7 and compared that with the GoBar at the same time. And again, I mean, not to sound repetitive, but I just felt like it was a tighter listen. It was a little bit more detailed of a listen out of the RU7 and was just a very nice listen. I didn't feel like it gave any kind of extra sound stage in my opinion, or you know, extra details to the treble and it didn't tone down anything. So it didn't add that kind of flavor to it, but again, it just tightened things up. And especially with IMs, what I noticed was I didn't hear as much kind of white noise and just noise background listening, at least on my EA500. One track example I wanna give is St. James Infirmary by Baba Blues. And that is a track that if you have that, at least I have it on title, it's got some natural just noise in the mix. I think that's just how it was mixed. And you know, if you have something that is a little bit more sensitive, you know, you can hear a little bit more of that noise being brought out some more and it can be a little bit distracting. And I did find that when I listened to that track on the Go Bar, even if I did the IE match, which that's a whole other thing to talk about. But even if I did the IE match on the go bar, I heard a little bit more of that noise even so than I did on the RU7. Now I still heard it on the RU7 because as I said, that trick is that trick, that track is mixed that way. But I felt like it was a little better and a little bit, again, uh, a little bit tighter and brought in to where I wasn't paying attention to that as much as I was the track itself. And so I thought that was very unique. And then I listened to this on the Cell Note Zero which is not a very ultra sensitive IM. And I thought that was a great listen, depending on whether I was going 4.4 or 3.5 again. And still, yes, I would say that I just heard a little less noise in the background. And that kind of showed the abilities of this DAC and that it was able to kind of cancel out some of that that I sometimes would hear on the go bar. And I thought that was, you know, very unique. So then I went ahead and I wanted to do, you know, some harder to drive headphones that I own. So for my harder to drive headphones, the first one I started with was the Meze Elite. And I wanted to try the Meze Elite directly on the 4.4 because I wanted to get as much power out as I could, knowing that that's a planar and something that will take well to additional power. And one track example I'll give you is a GoGo -Go Penguin track, uh, Parasite. That track has a lot of busyness going on towards the end, probably final like 20% of that track. I didn't get the exact mark, but when you get a lot of that music and information going on, that's kind of what I wanted to test on this to see if it still maintained those details and that instrument separation, and it did. And that's kind of a compliment to this again that I was talking about how it's got a refined sense of just bringing the notes in and making them tighter. You know, bass response, everything like that was excellent through the mix and sounded really good on this. When I listened on the Meze Elite and was just something that was another compliment to this. And again, to compare that to the IFI Go Bar, I do think this was a little tiny bit more detailed and separated on the instruments than even the Go Bar was, because like I said, that Go Bar can be a little bit warmer at times. Now, if you wanted a more a warmer presentation, that could be something that you lean towards more. But to me, this was just a little bit more precise and probably a compliment to the discrete DAC on this. And then when I went to my next hard to drive headphone, that was my new ZMF closed back atrium that I bought. I really wanted to test that one out. Of course, 4.4, of course I went uh, directly, well, I shouldn't say of course, but I did try low gain at first and I was getting up there between 70, 75 on the volume, which that's fine. I mean, not a big deal, but I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to high gain and just see if it, you know, does anything to my sound that I don't like. And it didn't. I mean, honestly, high gain in my atrium 
actually sounded really damn good. And I remember listening to a track called Break Law by Dog Blood. Look that one up. It's an EDM electronic type track, but around the 110 minute mark, it's got this bass that hits. And that's kind of what I wanted to hear. And it hit on the atrium closed. And I mean, I didn't feel like I lost out anything from you know something powered out of this little device out of the atrium closed. That was impressive. And I really enjoyed that listen out of that. And just, again, something that was very unique. Now it didn't do anything. The atrium closed, you know, is something that doesn't have the most forward mid range. So it didn't do anything to that. So I want to note that and make sure you guys understand that it's not doing anything to change up that part of the frequency response. And also, you know, as far as treble on things, didn't make anything peakier or anything warmer. I thought it was just very accurate response, but tight response. Again, is how I, you know, kind of put that. I feel like this also plays well at lower volumes than maybe some other dongle decks do. And I think that again, goes back to that just tightness of the mix that you're getting and that, you know, because it's not expanding out or making anything boomy, sometimes you need some more volume out of that to kind of bring things in a little bit. And I didn't feel like I needed that from this particular device was something else I liked because there were times where I was just literally sitting back on the couch, kind of relaxing. I think I took a nap once when I was listening on this and at lower volumes, I still felt all my music and enjoyed the listen of that. I think I was listening on the new Cobalt that I'm gonna be doing a review on. And you know, I love the listen and enjoyment that I got out of that at a lower volume setting. Now, last thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about this uh, experience here that I was telling you about. So. I'm crazy and I decided what the hell, let's just go for it. And I plugged this into my bottlehead crack and to be safe, I just used my cost Porter pros. I was like, well, something happens, whatever. It's my Porter pros. So I plugged in my Porter pros to the bottlehead crack, did the line out of this and I was having some issues right away. And what I figured out was for some reason, my U uh, app, uh, the USB app that I have through my phone for title was having problems. And I think that's more on the software than it is on this, because then I went ahead and switched over to just a tablet that I have that's an Android tablet and use title and listen on my bottlehead crack. And I was blown away. I was like, man, this sounds this sounds really good on my cost Porter Pros. I even have my wife sit down and listen. I'm like, check this out. I was like, this is the Porter Pros, $35 headphone on this little DAC out of a nice big tube amp. And it sounded amazing. And I mean, I didn't feel like I was losing out on too much of what you get out of a true DAC, but it just sounded so damn good. So then I went ahead and I also tried this on my Cayenne IHA-6 and paired it up. And I, again, paired it up with my tablet. And I think I listened to the, the Meze 109 Pros on that setup. And again, was just a very solid listen. It was probably not as good as, well, I shouldn't say probably, it was not as good as listening on my desktop DAC, you know, my Army ADI-2 DAC, but for a portable solution, yeah, it, it was it was just fine. Uh, and it, it was something that I could definitely see people wanting to use, and I can see why people requested that feature of this. And, you know, I could see somebody getting something like a shit Magni or something simple like that, kind of that you could take on the go because it's small enough, and to be able to use this on a desktop amp, yeah. I mean, that that's pretty cool to be able to do that. So final verdict is, you know, between this and the IFI go bar, I wanted to kind of decide, do I want to keep one of these? Do I want to sell one of these? I was really close to saying, yeah, I, I think I kind of want to sell my go bar and just keep the RU7. But then as I got to think about it, I do like the X base button of the go bar. I like that it's got a different flavor in that it can be a little warmer in the base. So, you know, some base light headphones maybe sound a little bit better on the go bar at times uh, but then sometimes it's a little too much in the go bar and i like the ru7 also being able to use this with a dac or even hook this up to you know a, or excuse me an amp and even hook this up to an amp with speakers i mean that's something that's going to be really unique to do to where i kind of see both of these staying with me for right now just because i think you get two different options there but for somebody comparing this between this and the ru6 I don't have that to compare. I think that's an interesting one as well as many other dongle docks out there. But this one, I love it. I am a big fan of Cayenne products as it is, but this did not uh, disappoint me one bit. So, and it is a one bit discrete DAC. So yeah. 
All right, guys, hopefully you appreciated this video. If so, please smash that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because I have more things that I'll be working on, including the new Hi-Fi Man and Dakoni collab with the Cobalt. I'm actually gonna be doing the review of that headphone very soon here, so stay tuned. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.